Yesterday, no one knew DeepSeek, but today it is the number one app in the App Store and absolutely crushing ChatGPT. But the truth behind its overnight rise is actually a lot more complex than you may think, so here's everything you need to know. Okay, so the high level is that there's this Chinese AI company named DeepSeek that launched a free large language model very similar to ChatGPT from OpenAI, except it's better in three very crucial ways. The first is the quality of its answers. The second is the cost to consumers. Right now it's free, whereas ChatGPT for the more advanced models can be anywhere from $20 a month to $200 a month. And the third is the cost to actually develop it. DeepSeek is saying that they spent under $6 million to develop this, which is an order of magnitude less than OpenAI's reported $100 million spent to develop GPT-4. And that price discrepancy has caused the US markets to react violently. Nvidia is currently 17% down and the overall market has lost $560 billion. But from a tech perspective, I actually don't think that that reaction makes sense. So let's talk about the differences between ChatGPT and DeepSync and both how they work and then how they were trained and like what costs go into that. So the models were trained very differently. DeepSync is using a brand new cutting edge training method called chain of thought reasoning. The approach enables the model to solve problems step-by-step step without previous learning. In comparison, ChatGPT uses supervised fine-tuning, where the model is given specific examples and answers. So for example, math problems are put in with the question and the solution, and then based off of that, ChatGPT learns and produces its own answers, and then a human supervisor goes in and rates how good or bad the answers are. So the learning is very specific to certain problems and it's supervised, whereas DeepSeek is using reinforcement learning, which is a little bit more similar to how humans learn, where the model Model goes in without seeing solutions and then it just learns through millions and millions of attempts and trial and error. This means that when it finally figures out the answer, it has much more breadth of knowledge. That has led to the DeepSeek model being better at self-correction and adaptability, which is especially useful in areas like coding or math or logic. It means that the answers can be a little bit more reliable and nuanced in comparison to ChatGPT, where occasionally it will guess when it's unsure. And the chain of thought reasoning will actually show you exactly how DeepSeek has figured out its answer. So sometimes with ChatGPT, it feels like a black box where you don't know exactly what information led to the outcome. But in DeepSeek's case, you would actually see exactly why it made certain decisions. And it rates its answers based on the quality of the answer, like its reward. So in the research paper, they showed how the model would go through a lot of different inputs and try different things. And all of its trials would then get a certain level of reward. And the model would learn, highest reward is good. Let's keep doing that going forward. I still think that some of the time ChatGPT's answers are more satisfying. And also there are certain topics that are limited on DeepSeek that you cannot ask about that you could ask ChatGPT about. And ChatGPT also has the voice mode, which feels a lot more conversational, like you're talking to an AI, but it feels at times like you're talking to a person. But in general, this is a huge advancement. And I think chain of thought reasoning is especially vital for actually learning as the user. Like you can, instead of just getting an output, figure out how they got the output so you can be better the next time. And DeepSeek is also open sourcing their code, which means that developers from all over the world can actually look at the models and see they're doing it. And when they did that, they realized how different the models are structured, especially from an equation standpoint. And that's because there's a twist. DeepSeek, although it's an AI company, is actually not solely an AI company. It's owned by a massive Chinese hedge fund called HiFlyer. And this hedge fund specifically focuses on quantitative analysis of stocks. So basically they pick stocks based on algorithms and science, which means that even though they only have 200 employees at the company, they're all pretty brilliant and very well versed in creating algorithms and equations, and those skills transfer to developing AI. And it also means that they had a lot of existing GPUs that were running all of the mathematical equations for the stocks. And GPUs are a crucial part of the story. So the reason why OpenAI and Microsoft and Google are spending millions upon millions of dollars and partnering with NVIDIA is to buy their GPUs. The GPUs are what power the models to actually work and just go through massive amounts of data. And they're very expensive and also hard to get your hands on. At many times throughout the last few years, there's been GPU shortages and you see companies just trying to strengthen their partnership with NVIDIA to make sure that they can get their hands on enough compute power. But in China, it's actually even harder to get your hands on compute power because in 2022, the US government imposed restrictions on exporting advanced NVIDIA GPUs like the A100 or H100 to China. Those chips are the critical ones for training AI models. and so the restrictions were put on to probably try to prevent China from gaining a technological edge here. And so DeepSeek would not be allowed to have access to massive amounts of NVIDIA GPUs. So there's a chance that they actually do have massive amounts of NVIDIA GPUs, but they're just not allowed to admit it, which means that it potentially could have actually cost more than $6 million to produce this, but they're just not able to say that. Either way, and despite the market panic, I actually think that NVIDIA and a lot of the American AI companies are going to be okay. And that's because as Satya, the Microsoft CEO put it, as AI gets more efficient and more accessible, we'll see its use skyrocket, which 
which turns it into a commodity that we cannot get enough of. Meaning that as AI gets better, we're actually going to be using more of it, not less of it. Like if it increases our productivity, we're going to double down and use even more. And because DeepSeek has open sourced the way that they actually invented this technology, OpenAI and Google and all of the other major AI companies are probably studying it right now and implementing it into their next models. We're in a critical moment in the AI race where pessimists are saying that things are really going to go downhill and optimists are saying that we're closer than ever to AGI and curing a lot of diseases and unlocking new levels of productivity. I think there are valid concerns on both sides, but I am incredibly excited and optimistic about so many areas of technology and I think that we're in for a really good ride. So hopefully this video helped you feel like you have a great understanding of what's going on in the tech world with every single interview and breakdown. That is my goal. I appreciate you being here and if you're curious about how ChatGPT compares to Google's Gemini, you can click right here.